Hey everyone, Vladimir is here with our multi-platform game development tutorial part 10. Now in previous lesson we've actually learned how to, you know, lose the game and implement that functionality but it wasn't really clean, you know. And today we're going to implement the fonts to tell how many lives the player has and uh, to tell him that his game is defeat he lost the game instead of, you know, just simply quitting. So first thing first, let me get to my desktop. Cool. Uh, the Android Studio got updated. It offers you to update the Gradle plugin, but uh, I really don't think we should do this for this pro project. So I'm pressing don't remind me again. You can update it, but it's on your own. You know, it's your own risk. So, okay. Uh, what we need to do first is we need to pick a font. And, um, you know, as I said, the GDX, uh, the graphics in computers cannot simply take the TTF fonts and um, display them. We need to convert true type font into texture. To do this, we are going to use the special tool offered by libgdx. It's called Hero. It's going, we're going to download it. And uh, then we're going to pass him the font. And uh, to choose the fonts, I'm going to leave the links to those things after the lesson, by the way. So, and the second thing we need is, well, some kind of font. It really is up to you. I just pick public domain fonts from the special bit font maker gallery. And um, let me pick, I've actually, I like the Mega Man 10 font. I'm going to download to my computer and save it as TTF file. And my hero is almost downloaded. So as soon as it's done, I'm going to launch it. I'm going to select the fonts that we have downloaded and um, it will actually save it as a texture. So it's really simple. We pick the file, we choose the Mega Man 10 font that you have downloaded and uh, at the bottom you can see <laughs> what's going on I think font size 16 might be enough I usually pick Java and uh, bold one to do I pick padding 2 because we need a bit more distance between the letters and uh, I think let me pick size 32 and see how it looks in game. So after you have set things up, you just save BMP font files and uh, you pick your, uh, you know, frequent flyer folder. You go to, uh, not frequent flyer, sorry, that's my game. Uh, you go to your dodging hero folder. Uh, digs, dodging hero, Android, assets and you save your fonts inside the assets folder i'm just give it the name gamefont.fnt and if you actually go to that folder uh dodging hero android assets if you go there you can see that there are two files fnt file and game font file game font is essentially a picture of our font that's all and uh, the fnt file describes how to use it so this part is done now what we need to do is load our font and uh, this is actually pretty simple we go to our resources we implement introduce the variable uh, public bitmap font game font and um, we we'll, uh, we'll load the font game font is equal to new bitmap font you need to pass the paths to our font files and to our texture image files so three parameters first we take gdx files internal and we take our game font fn10 this internal directive function looks up in, inside our android assets function folder so this is going to be okay gdx files uh, internal now we pass the path to our texture our game font png file and we don't want it flipped, so we choose false. 
after that we are actually ready to test it. Let's go back to our game screen and um, in our game screen let me close the hero and in our game screen let's introduce a new function which will draw player's UI like interface public no it's private it shouldn't be public public void draw UI and what will it do it will call badge begin badge end and in the middle it will try to draw our font game res game font uh, call we call draw we pass our batch and we pass coordinates we pass our string which will be the players lives lives plus player get lives see we have already everything ready we just need to format it correctly and after that uh, you pass x and y coordinates the x would be 5 y as you remember goes from bottom to top so it should be on the top of the screen and to get here the top of the screen I just use stage get viewport get screen y this is the border the actual lower border of our screen uh, and uh, I add game stage get height but the thing is with fonts I think um, it's a bit different than the texture drawing because fonts are drawn from top to bottom so we just pass the top coordinate right now uh, don't worry about it yet let me just launch the game and see how it is maybe I'm wrong okay I might be wrong let me see what's going on ah maybe I'm not wrong I should add the draw UI call right before the draw stage call so you do this and after you're done launch the game and we see that lives like we have our live display and as you may see it's it's very big it just isn't good enough so we go back to hero we load the same file it saves the data and uh, reduce the font twice to 16 don't forget to adjust the padding to 2 as we talked and uh, resave the font file it will offer to resave it in the same folder Great. Now let's try running the game again. Okay, as you can see, it somewhat draws our font on top of the screen. Uh, let me see if I can make it a bit better. What if I draw it at the height of the game stage? Okay, it doesn't <laughs> change much. But, you know, just add some padding to our game height. Or rather, remove some padding. Like, remove 5 or 7 pixels. That's what we are gonna do for now. And you see, the lives are drawn and somewhat perfectly arranged. No matter how you resize the window, everything is drawn okay. So, uh, after that, I think it's a good idea that we handle defeat. We, you remember that after a game ends, the, sim the game simply <laughs> exits. Great. But it's not very user-friendly. So, let's just write a huge, you know, letter, word, defeat after the player loses the game. And uh, let's not allow him to move. So, some things. Uh, first, we need to block the controls, right? In our keydown function, um, we have to add the check if player... No, actually, let's go to attempt move function. And there, in our uh, condition, we need to check if player get lives are greater than zero. Basically, if player is alive. Uh, and uh, if logic can move, the previous condition stands. So attempt move won't be working when player is dead. That's all good. But we also don't want the enemy to attack, so in this case we just stop updating the logic. You see our update function, which has the logic update. I think we just add if player get lives is greater than zero, then update the logic. And the one last thing that we need to do is actually write the defeat word. 
I think it's nice if we add, you know, the red letters to write it. So uh, let's address our font. Uh, let's set the color of our font to red. Color red. You can also pass RGB values from zero to one. Uh, for example, like one oh oh one. It's like red, green, black, alpha. Red, red, green, blue, alpha. So in our case, the font is non-transparent and red. And after you actually change the color, don't forget to set it back. That's the first thing that you should do. After you've set the color, uh, let's write the feet. Let us write the feet. Let the player lose the game gracefully. So yes, let us write defeat. Mm. Defeat. Pass the coordinates. I'm passing zero as x, meaning it will be leftmost. But you'll see why I'm doing this. I'm passing the get gets viewport. Screen Y plus game stage get height divided by two. This uh, the height we just uh, wanted to really be written in the middle of the screen. So the height is obvious. We take the height divided by two. The width, I prefer to do it a bit differently in order for it to be al aligned perfectly. So we pass the game stage get width as our target width parameter. Basically, we're just telling him to use the whole screen to write our simple word defeat and after that we can set the alignment. So I'm aligning the text in the center and I'm not wrapping it. And if you see now, we're going to launch the game and um, try to lose it. Okay, it's written defeat right before the loss, but you can see how it looks. Uh, basically, let's just add the condition. If player get lives lesser than or equal than zero, then we are actually writing the feed. Uh, right, so right now we will get the writing the feed after we lose. Let's try to lose intentionally. But one thing that you can already see is uh, how our lives written. Uh, it's not very good on our background because there's no overlay, there's no border, and the, the feet is even worse. So how can we fix this? The usual fix, one of them, is to add the black borders to our letters. So let's uh, introduce the different function that would uh, draw a black background behind the feet and lives. And uh, after the black background is drawn, we will draw the same words uh, only in the red, only in the respective colors. So to do this, we're actually going to write the same word, but in black, behind. Uh, let's introduce the function um, draw shadowed. And, uh, oh, that's fine. Uh, yep, yeah. let's introduce the function draw shadowed. It will accept our string, which we want to write. It will accept the x and y variables, it will accept the width, and uh, it will accept alignment, in case we want to align left, like with our lives, or center, like with our defeat. And uh, apart from alignment, we also need to pass the color, of course. So, um, first thing first, we're drawing the shadow, right? The black letters in the background. Uh, but we will you know, make them move to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom by one. And this will ensure that we have the shadow. So first thing first, we set the color of the background to black. And as usual, whenever we change the color, don't forget to change it back. Just do it, do it at once so you won't forget it later. After that, let's just ensure that we draw the background. We're going to go from minus 1 to 2 horizontally, and we're going to do the same uh, vertically. 
uh, and uh, for every coordinate we are going to draw our string this will be drawn in black so x plus y y plus j and uh, width and with our alignment and uh, we're not wrapping it so if we call it now just to show you what happens if we call it now if we just replace our lives with draw shadow draw shadow function we pass our lives we're not going to yeah we're actually going to pass five we're going to pass game stage get height minus seven and we're going to pass you know the game stage get with but it's irrelevant in this case because we're going to align it to the left and uh, color color is white after we've done this let me just show you what happens right now you will see the black background only but this is something you see we have the lives you cannot actually distinguish it because it's ugly but something is there okay uh, after that close our application and uh, the only thing we need to do is to change the game font's color to our actually color that we have passed and we need to call our game font draw function but without any adjustments on <laughs> exact same coordinates that has been passed and with exact same alignment and right now if we launch the game you will see what's happening as you can see our lives has the black you know outline right now and it's much more visible and much more distinguishable so let's do the same thing with defeat close it and uh, replace those three lines that we had with one simple line draw shadowed defeat uh, we're going to pass zero as x uh, game stage get height divided by 2 game stage get width we pass the full width and uh, we align it on the center of the screen after that we also want to use the color oops we want to use the red color so that should do it let's see what's happening we know that lives are already working but is our let's try to die intentionally see our lives are decreasing fine and after we've lost our last life we see that the feat is being written so this is exactly what we wanted to achieve uh, I think a good it's a lesson 10 font and defeat font and uh, basic UI and after that I just push it. thank you for watching this concludes it and um, I think in the next lesson we're going to implement the enemy attacks on our, how we can attack the enemy and with how we can actually win one of the rounds so, thank you for watching, see you next time!